All right, so we've been talking at length about the Z transform, defining it, talking about this region of convergence, talking about how we can get the DTFT out of the Z transform. Finally, now let's actually work through a set of examples where we'll actually get some practice at evaluating the Z transform. So, first, let's do Z transform example one. So, in this example, we are going to find the Z transform for the signal x of k equals this signal. So, we're going to start off simple. We're going to start off with this signal that is equal to 1 at time minus 1, 3 at time equals 0, 2 at time equal 1, and a negative 1 at time k equal 2, and it's 0 everywhere else. So if I was going to plot this signal in discrete time k, it would end up looking like this. It's equal to 1 at minus 1, it's equal to 3 at time 0, 2 at time 1, and a negative 1 at time 2, and it is 0 everywhere else. What I'm asked to do in this problem is I'm asked to compute the z-transform of this signal. This is actually what we call a finite length signal, so we're actually not going to have to worry about any convergence issues here, because when we evaluate the z-transform, there won't be an infinite number of things I'm summing up. There's only going to be four things that I'm summing up, because there are only four non-zero samples in this signal. So this is kind of a good first one to worry, to work on, because in terms of region of convergence, it's a much simpler type of problem to work. So let's go ahead and compute the z-transform. By definition, the z-transform is the sum from k equals minus infinity to infinity of our signal times z to the minus k. Well, for our particular signal here, almost all of the terms in this infinite sum are zero. The only terms that aren't zero is at k equals negative one, k equals zero, k equals one, and k equals two. So I can actually simplify my limits quite a bit from k equals minus 1 to 2. I haven't changed anything because for our particular example I just have zeros outside of here, but this simplifies the limits quite a bit. And now since it's such a short list of things, I'm actually going to write out each term. So at k equals minus 1, my signal x of k is equal to 1, and I have to multiply that times z to the negative k, where k is equal to minus 1, plus the k equals 0 term, I'll have x of 0, which is 3, times z to the 0, because k is 0, plus the z equals 1 term, or k equals 1 term, x of 1 is equal to 2, so I have 2 times z to the negative 1, because k is 1, and then finally the last term is when k is equal to 2, I'll have x of 2, which is a negative 1, times z to the negative 2, because k is 2. So what I end up with is just z to the 1, plus 3, plus 2z to the negative 1, minus z to the negative 2. So this is the z-transform of my discrete time signal x of k. It's a polynomial in z, and this is the z-transform of the signal. One the other thing I'll do right now is I'm going to find the DTFT of the signal. We've talked about how easy that is to do if you already know the z-transform of the signal x of k. And we already do know that the z-transform. It's right here. We can get the DTFT out of this z-transform just by evaluating it on the unit circle. So what does it mean to evaluate on the unit circle? It means pick the points that are unit magnitude away from the origin. Well, that is the set of points z equals e to the j omega, because e to the j omega is the unit circle. As omega changes from 0 to 2 pi, it maps out a circle in the complex plane. So I can get out x of omega by simply replacing every z in this equation by e to the j omega. So that's what I'm going to do. I replace the first z with e to the j omega, plus 3, there aren't any z's there to worry about, plus 2 times z to the minus 1, but z to the minus 1 is e to the minus j omega, once I've swapped out z with e to the j omega, minus e to the minus 2 j omega. So I can easily get out the DTFT of my signal just by evaluating the z-transform on the unit circle. For this case, we didn't have to worry about the region of convergence containing the unit circle, because for finite length signal, the only places that we have to worry about are when z is equal to 0. You can see that this thing actually blows up. If z equals 0, I'd have 1 over 0. So the only point that we have to worry about is z equals 0, or when z is infinity or minus infinity, I plug into x of z, it blows up. 
but those are the only points you worry about for finite length signal, the origin and infinity. So those are the only points that aren't contained in the region of convergence. So the region of convergence does contain the set of points on the unit circle, so we're free to plug into x of z, and once we plug into x of z, e to the j omega, that gives us the DTFT of our signal. So this is a nice, short, simple example, a finite length signal where we compute the z-transform, and then once we compute the z-transform, we also get out the DTFT almost trivially by just plugging in z equals e to the j omega.